Hello, you speakers. I'm Katsam. I'm George. And I'm Javier. The IELTS system has been setting the standard for English language testing for over 30 years. It is trusted by more than 11,500 organizations in over 140 countries around the world. This means that when you take the IELTS test, you can be confident that the result will be recognized by institutions, employers, professional body or government that needs to verify your English language proficiency. Governments in many countries trust IELTS when processing immigration applications. IELTS was developed by some of the world's leading language assessment experts to test the full range of skills needed to study or work successfully in an English-speaking country. You will be assessed on listening, writing, reading, and speaking. But let me say no more. We'll be talking in more depth in this podcast today uh, that's right guys so remember good scores in the first three skills are important but the speaking test carries significant weight in fact a lot of uh places will tell you that uh yeah the scores are right but we need a minimum of such score in just the speaking part so yeah look no further we're here to help okay so stay tuned because today you're learning about ielts Welcome to another episode of the You Speak English podcast. Thank you for hitting that play button and subscribing to our podcast channel. Remember, you can download the script for this podcast. The link is in the description box below. And phrasal verb of the week. Did you know that the phrasal verb draw up, draw up can be used in two different contexts? For example, prepare or create. In, in a general sense, draw up can mean to prepare or create something, typically a document, plan, or list. For example, draw up a contract, draw up a business plan, or draw up a list of requirements. Okay, examples. The team will draw up a proposal for the upcoming project. Move in an upward direction. In another context, especially related to medical or injection terminology, ouch, mm -hmm. draw up can refer to the action of pulling a, a liquid into a syringe. Ow. It's often, yeah, it's often used in the context of preparing a medication for injection. Example, the nurse will draw up the prescribed medication before administering it. Yeah. That, makes me, that makes me want to draw up my pants and <laughs> get out of there. Sir. <laughs> Pull my pants in an upward direction. I got it right, George, right? Okay, fun fact. Did you guys know that the United States is the country with the largest number of English speakers? Ooh. That's right, per capita. Which do you think is the second place? I don't know. Uh, no. UK? Eng England? UK, you might think UK, right? But no, it's India, followed by <gasps> Pakistan. and what? then Nigeria. Yeah, that's right. They speak English in Pakistan? Oh, my God. That's a new for me. No. And finally, Nigeria. But yes, we have heard. In fact, we've got an application from people from Nigeria, right, George? That want to teach yes, us. With we us. have. Oh, okay. okay. And, and the United Kingdom, yeah, and the United Kingdom is relegated to the fifth place. UK is the fifth place with the people with the most English speakers. Although this is the country where the highest percentage of the population do speak English. Oh. As opposed to, you know, there are places in other nations where, well, you ever been to LA? <laughs> yeah, not a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, not a lot of people speak English there. No, no, not a lot. Well, better. Armenians speak <laughs> Armenian. Turks, yeah, they have Armenian. They speak they... Turkish. Russians speak Russian. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah, they do. They, they exactly don't want to just. They want to stay. I don't know if it, I don't know if they do it for privacy or so. Or uh, well, why do they do it? There is something called ethnocentrism. You guys ever mm. heard of that? Yes. yes. That's when you feel that your your culture is much better than others, and that actually hinders language development. Of course. Yeah. Absolutely. Believe it or not. All right. So now to the main topic. Uh, today we we have the IELTS speaking part one because uh, this test is divided into three parts, and we want to break it down for you the IELTS speaking test into three parts. So today you're going to be looking at part one. In part one, it's all about you and your family, where you live, etc. George, any tips on how to yeah. conquer part one? How to ace it? You bet, Katza. Think of part one as a friendly chat. 
be fluent, sound natural, and talk about yourself with ease. Remember, it's your time to shine. And don't forget to practice those family-related questions. You never know when they'll pop up. And let me tell you that here, they're pretty simple questions. So you think like, oh, I'm going to ace this. No, nope. you know, rumor has it that they're actually gauging you there. Mm-hmm. One thing one thing that you should try to do is try to connect ideas. And don't stop talking until the examiner stops you. Oh, Another that's trick. a really good tip. Yes, if you give too mm. short of an answer, that's not good. That's why at you speak, we always teach short answers are not good. Answers. Are not good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And we always kind of like challenge our students to speak for Say longer more, than two minutes, exactly. right? Look at us you, guys, you guys notice that in our in our methodology, it's always says talk more. Yeah. Say as much as you can for that particular. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Okay. And now, uh, for to show you how it is done. We're gonna uh, we're gonna ask you to pay close attention to the following role play where George is going to portray the examiner and Javier is going to portray the test taker. They will show us how this part of the test is done. Okay, great. So I'll uh, be the examiner and right. let's see. Now in this part, I'd like to ask you some questions about yourself, okay? Let's talk about your hometown or village. What kind of place is it? It's quite a small village, about 20 kilometers from Surich, and it is very quiet. And we have only a little uh, two shops because most of the people work in Surich or are oriented to the city. What's the most interesting part of this place? Uh, On top of all the hills, we have a little castle, which is very old and quite well known in Switzerland. Okay. What kind of jobs do people in this place do? Um, we have some farmers on the village, as well as people who work in Zurich as bankers or journalists, or there are also teachers and some doctors, some medicines. Would you say it's a good place to live in? Yes, although it is very quiet. It is. Uh, people are friendly, and I would say it is a good place to live there. Yes. Let's move on to talk about accommodation. Tell me about the kind of accommodation you live in. And and of role play. Okay, so as you were able to notice, Javier was actually not speaking very fast, which is not related to fluency at all, but he was very clear. And even though he made a few mistakes, he was able to communicate his ideas. So don't focus on your mistakes, focus on portray uh, on on conveying the right message and exactly. obviously Clear, if you clarity. are if you can perfect it perfect <laughs> it <laughs> yeah but they're uh, really looking for clarity how yeah. clear you are and yes, how well exactly. you can convey ideas okay so as the speaking test is divided into three parts each taking between four and ten minutes we will be presenting IELTS speaking part two and three shortly in another episode But in the meantime, make sure you practice this part a lot. To all our listeners out there, practicing is key. George, what is the best way to go about it? Well, uh, one of them is find a study partner, tackle all three parts in one go without a break. And don't hold back. Speak as much as you can without rushing. Learn more vocabulary. And if you can't find a study partner or you're looking to practice with a native speaker, give us a call and we'll let you know how we can partner up in this adventure. Oh, here's a golden nugget. Record yourself. It's a game changer for self-reflection. Okay, you record yourself and look at yourself and they have a checklist of what you're looking for. Time for a quick review after your practice sessions. Kasa, what should they focus on? Well, you should listen to your recordings. Think about fluency naturalness and clarity ask yourself did i express myself effectively and also identify areas for improvement and you're on the right track all right and this brings us to the end of the our episode let's wrap it up javier okay so part one um everybody finds it very simple because they're very simple questions now here's the catch uh uh, rumor has it that that they're actually gauging you as, as as of practice question number one. Uh, 
So as a tip, develop your question. Don't just give short answers. Short answers are bad answers. Develop your questions by using connectors. And so, but, and you can contrast your answer by saying, therefore, however, and don't stop talking, as we said before, until the examiner tells you. They will interrupt you. Don't worry about it. They will interrupt you. They have a they have an agenda to meet. Okay. So mm-hmm. they can only spend so, so much time per student that they're and they're not only evaluating you. So if if you give a let a shorter answer, uh, you're losing points. So keep yeah. talking, get used to keep on talking to that answer that you already gave. All right. Okay. So keep in mind the IELTS is one of many different tests out there. But they all mainly test your four skills, reading, listening, speaking, and writing. So if you're interested in taking this or one of these tests, you need to improve all these four skills significantly. All right. And that's it for today. Thank you, all of our audience, for tuning in. If you enjoyed this podcast, please consider subscribing to our channel and sharing it with your friends. Also, remember to check out our YouTube channel where you can find the video version of this podcast. Feel free to leave a comment on our videos too. Lastly, visit our website where you find articles about English practice and learning. Oh, and please don't forget to follow us on social media. You will find us as at USPK English, the one with the yellow logo. We're everywhere except for X and threads. And remember, perfect practice makes perfect. All right. Until next time. See you then. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you.